<laughs> All right. Awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Once again, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And today I have with me Lori Smith. Uh, Lori is an intuitive public speaking and leadership coach. She helps visionaries on a soul driven mission to stand in their power, speak their truth and lead so they can do their part to change the world with authenticity, creativity and courage. Lori, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for being here. Let's get right into it. Question number one, why did you become a coach? I felt it was my calling as soon as I knew what it was. I was teaching theater at a community college, teaching voice and acting for adults ages 18 to 65. And a woman who was a coach came up to me after a class and she said, I think you're a coach. And I didn't actually, I had never heard of coaching at that point. And there was something about this interaction. I remember her face almost looking like it was in a fun mirror and time almost felt like it was slowing down behind her. Wow. So I really listened to what she was saying. And in true kind of coaching style, she told me that she thought that I had an intuitive style that wasn't what I had been taught that other teachers and acting coaches do. Mm -hmm. And that I wasn't always listening to my intuitive coaching style. And she said, it's like teachers are taught they're supposed to be up on a pedestal professing their knowledge down, even though we don't think of it that way here in theater. Mm -hmm. And she said, when you trust yourself, you don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. And you're much more kind of on an equal level in it with us, being curious, listening to your intuition and you will seem like you are reading the actor's minds when you do that. Mm -hmm. And the performances that you are drawing out of them is better than the performances at this stage that anyone else is pulling out of them. Mm -hmm. So, and then she said, but when you don't trust yourself, it really kind of falls flat because it's not your way. Uh -huh. I think you're a coach, go check out this coaching class and you know, my, it was like my intuition was hearing her and my brain was going, what is a coach? She doesn't mean basketball. And I listened to my gut and went to the first coaching class, which was at the coaches training Institute. And within 15 minutes of being in that room, I had the distinct thought, this is the final piece of what I'm going to create in the world. Even though if you had asked me to tell you what that looked like, I would have said, I have no idea. I just feel like this is, there have been bits throughout my life from theater to leadership to coaching that were like corners of the puzzle of my life. And it just felt like, oh, okay, I am home. I love it. I love it. That's a great answer. Question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? After years learning to speak about the results rather than the path, this is a really fun question. My uniqueness is really, a, is really kind of, well, it is the public speaking and the leadership spectrum. I specialize in helping people to tap into their innate charisma, to their presence. I believe that we are all born with it. And then society actually teaches us habits of suppressing our voices, suppressing our primal life force, tells us that we're too big, tells us that we're too much. And those things become stored in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like if we're trying to raise consciousness on the planet, we're trying to do it with the voice of Cro-Magnon man. Like if Cro-Magnon man tried to stand upright, he didn't have the body for it. And when I look around, it's like that Michelangelo quote, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set him free. I see the real soul and I see energetically and physically what is blocking that unique innate charisma or presence from coming across with the awareness that we can literally touch people with the sound of our voices. Nice. Love it. Question number three, where or how do you find your clients? Primarily referrals mm -hmm. from other 
soulmate clients that have worked with me wrecking some recognizing someone in the same state that they're in also a bit of speaking whether that's in person speaking or speaking on zoom or speaking on a podcast mm -hmm. that people will see me embodying what i want for them mm -hmm. and then come up to me out of curiosity and say you know can i work with you and I've started to get a few off of social media, actually. I, I worked with a branding person last summer to, to help convey in the written word and in visuals, which are not my forte, I'm a talker, mm -hmm. to help the real me come across in those visuals and in the written word more and more and more. So now I've got people who will see one post and actually reach out and ask to have a conversation. And then, of course, they meet me and we get to know each other. Mm -hmm. That's great. Awesome. Question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Only, only get to pick a, one. <laughs> yeah, I only get to pick one. Really following my own intuition in running the business. I'm extremely good at listening to my intuition when there is a client or a workshop participant right there in front of me. It's easy. It's effortless. And when I'm off on my own as a coach who's running a business, that is a lot harder. I, my own inner critics, and I call them the soul suckers, my own will come in and my brain will try to take the reins. And I, that is not my zone of genius. My zone of genius is intuition. I love the Albert Einstein quote, intuition is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faith, faithful, faithful servant. Mm -hmm. I tend to reverse those as the coach part of me that's running a business and I get in my own way. I love that. That's a good, a great answer. Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would it be? I think I lost you for a moment. I'll try again. If you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would it be? What's coming to me right in this moment, it's, it's half a do-over and half I didn't meet this woman until recently. I would have done the branding process that I went through in year one instead mm -hmm. of in year 12. Spent, you know, I had four different company names along the way. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many websites. Did a lot of let me try to get all the clients instead of zeroing in on visionaries who need to speak in order to fulfill their soul's purpose on the planet. Lots of trial by error and mistakes. And I would feel myself tapping into that aligned intuitive place and then drifting off and, you know, pushing boulders up hills and then coming back to that intuitive place. But I sort of didn't know what that intuitive place was. Mm -hmm. And when I worked with, it's a kind of a deep transformational branding process mm -hmm. with this woman last year, I felt like she brought me back to that home within me and then reflected back. This is what that means in terms of your brand. So if you're attempting to write something, this is what you've shown me as your brand voice. So if you write it over here, you're not writing as yourself. She feels like my doppelganger. That's sort of what I feel like I do for speakers, but for the written word and for images, not my cup of tea or a cup of coffee. <laughs> I wish I had met her in year one. This is, that's great. That's, that's a good one. And I want to, I want to offer a counterpoint to that as mm. a, as a marketing and branding expert myself, I cannot, it's difficult to put into words how foundational and transformational, I know that's an overused cliche at this point, but how important, I'll just leave it there, how important branding is and understanding your own branding. And is oftentimes is not. A business owner doesn't may not necessarily know exactly who they want to be as a business owner or who they want to target in year one. I think there's a lot of learning, right, that happens and, and your, your target person, right? Your visionary may change between year one and year two or year three. So do you want to get clear on that stuff in year one? Absolutely. But I also think it's important to be open to that changing and morphing into something different as you, as you grow. We're all, we're all, we're all you know, especially as coaches, we're all growing at all times. 
Yeah, I <clears throat> I wholeheartedly agree with you. It, it's part my impatient teenager yeah. who wishes I had known in year one. Uh -huh. And there is a part of me that absolutely knows I met her at the perfect time. Uh -huh. And as you spoke that, I remember her catching me talking to an ideal client that was as if I was talking to an ideal client from seven years in the past. And she said it, you know, it, in some ways it feels aligned, but it doesn't feel current to where you are now. And that's exactly what you're speaking to. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. Bonus question. What is one book that you recommend all your clients read? Oh, I, I have to go with the one that I just finished that I absolutely love. It's called The Soul Sourced Entrepreneur. Okay. I recommend it even to my visionary clients who don't, they're not entrepreneurs. They're working a day job and have a mission that they're passionate about that is in their free time mm -hmm. because it is about really getting, you can't take a, the diet pill equivalent of making your mission happen. You can't take the diet pill version of running a business. How do you come back to your soul and your intuition and do it? your way and her writing felt like we were sitting in a room together and she was writing to me so that is oh. my current very recent finished it on saturday faith of the Brit. nice i'll have to check that one out myself awesome Lori. And, and is there something is there anything else you would like to add or pitch or promote and also please let us know uh, where our listeners can connect with you online absolutely one of my favorite places to find me is I now have a Facebook group called Authentic Speaking for Visionary Souls. So search for that. It's a place for us to come together and be in our authentic soul voices. And I have a also my baby favorite program that I run it is called Con Compelling Speaker, Master the Art of Presence. And that launches about three times a year. It's going to launch in a couple of weeks. If, if that what's the, sounds what's the amazing. Date? What's the date that it will launch? Because we're recording this on April 20th, but as of, as of this moment, I'm not sure when the podcast will be released. Yeah. The next one will launch on May 4th and okay. run until June 29th. And then the one after that will be most likely in September. Okay. Go to my website, uh, www.voice-matters.com and connect with me there if that's something of interest to you and you can apply to be one of the visionary souls in that program. Awesome. Lori Smith, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches podcast. And thank you to our audience, uh, our listeners for tuning in. We'll see you guys all next time. Cheers.